Bill Frana, and we are starting a study of the book of Ephesians today. A mighty book, a book of great revelation for the body of Christ. It shows us who we are in Christ. It shows us the church, the place of the church. It shows us the authority of the church. It shows us how to walk out the Christian life by the Spirit of God, how to put off the old man, how to put on the new man. It talks to some about marriage. It talks about our combat in the heavenly places and how we need to sit, walk, and stand. Those are the three big words of the book of Ephesians. Sit in your place in Christ. Occupy your position of authority. Walk out the Christian life in the Spirit, in the love of God, putting off the old man and putting on the new, and then stand. Stand in the hour of combat. Stand on what God has already spoken, what the Word of God has already declared, and also stand against every adversary that would try to stop you from making progress in the Christian life. In Ephesians chapter 1, Paul says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Paul is establishing his apostolic authority here that he is an apostle, a sent one, a messenger. That's what the word apostle means. It means a sent one, a messenger of God and that he was sent according to the will of God. He wasn't sent by man or even an organization of man, but he was sent by God himself to establish truth in the church and to basically give the church a revelation of their rights, their privileges, and their inheritance in Christ. Every believer needs to understand that he has an inheritance in Jesus Christ. He has a place and a position in the Spirit and in the family of God. And also, every believer needs to understand that he has weapons of combat that he can use against the devil and all of his forces. And we're going to get into that as we go along. He's writing to the faithful. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace, that's what it's all about in the Christian life, walking in the grace, the ability, the power of God. And walking in peace, the shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. So he's reminding them that they have ability. He's also reminding them that they have peace in the troubled world that they lived in in their day. And then it gets into, in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Wow, this is a tremendous kickoff to this chapter that Paul is revealing from the very start that every church Every believer is blessed with every spiritual blessing. That's talking about everything that Christ accomplished through his redemption. That we have died with Christ, we've been buried with him, we've been raised up with him to a new life, and we have been seated with him in heavenly places, in a place of dominion, authority. We are the people that God has called to walk out the life of Christ on this earth. We have no less equipment than Christ did to walk out his life on this earth. We have the same spirit. We have the same life. We have the same anointing, the Bible says, and we'll get into that in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27. We have the very wisdom and mind of God. And with this wisdom and mind of God, we can walk 
in God's very own life, nature, and righteousness. These are some of the greatest spiritual blessings that you will ever have in your life. And then he talks about here, just as he chose us, in him before the foundation of the world. We were chosen by God. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. We have the same life that was in Christ. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So we share in his death, burial, and resurrection. We share in his ascension. We share in his seating. The Bible says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. These are tremendous revelations. Yes, they are factual. Yes, it is truth. But it's also the revelation of the Spirit of God to the church in this age. That we are the champions. We are the mighty ones. We're the ones that rule and reign in this life through Jesus Christ. We don't have a, a church that's full of weakness and defeat. We have a mighty church, a glorious church, a church that operates in the life and nature of God himself. We have power through the Holy Spirit and power through the Word. And as we get into this book, we're gonna see the importance of the Word of God and we're gonna see the importance of the spirit of grace. As we go on here, we see that we have God's own choosing on our lives. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Think about it. Before the world was ever formed, you were in God's thoughts. You were in God's plan and purpose. His design included you before he even created the world. And at the right time, the time that he selected, he brought you into this world through your parents to walk out a plan and a purpose that was to fulfill his plan for the ages. It's not just some small little individual plan. It's a plan of the ages that you and I were included in when he planned it. And then it says that we should be holy and blameless before him. That's what Christ has done for us. He's made us the righteousness of God. We are holy and blameless before God not because of anything we've done, but because of the mighty work of redemption through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has made us worthy. He has judged our sin and given us the gift of righteousness so that we can walk in a place in God in this life. We don't have to be alone on this earth to combat all of the challenges. But we can do them with confidence and boldness through our relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are a temple of God, and the Spirit of the living God lives inside every believer. The Bible says, he who has joined himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. And so today we're going to learn about our relationship with Jesus Christ. And then it says, in love he predestined us to adoption as sons. I mean, we are royalty. We've been adopted into the family of God. 
The ruler of the universe is our daddy, our father. Talks about in Romans 8, Abba, Father. He is our intimate, personal friend, guide, counselor. He is giving us direction every day by His Spirit. And so here it talks about just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before Him in love, predestined us to adoption as sons. We've been adopted. In fact, we've been transferred out of the dom domain of darkness into the kingdom of God's beloved Son. We've been transferred out of this world's darkness and the world system, the Antichrist system, and we have been brought in to a glorious relationship in the kingdom of God. We are King's kids. And here he talks about, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. That's unconditional acceptance. The King James Version of Ephesians 1, 6 says that we're accepted in the beloved. No more rejection. No more being alone, feeling separated. No, we're accepted in the beloved. Notice it says, in the beloved. I want you to notice that word as we go through this book, the word in, in Christ, in whom. We are living in a day, if we understand our identification in Christ, if we understand who we are in Him and who He is in us, we will be overcomers and champions in every situation and in every circumstance. There is no weapon formed against us as believers that can overcome us. There is no circumstance that can stop us. There is no difficulty that we cannot overcome through the glorious resurrection power of Jesus Christ in our life. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We've been redeemed from sickness, sin, spiritual death. We have been redeemed. We are alive in Christ and we're getting stronger every day. So now we're learning how to walk in Him, how to live in Him, how to abide in Him. We're learning His ways, and we're learning how to walk in truth. As we go on here, I'm just going to conclude with this today. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. We have redemption. That means we've been purchased. We've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. We've been purchased out of the slave market of sin and fear and worry and anxiety. There's another life on the inside of us, the life of the Son of God. And we're gonna learn about this life because we share everything with Him. Everything He did was for us. Everything He has belongs to us, and everything we have belongs to Him. We are the most blessed people. We are the most... We are people of miracles, signs, and wonders. We are a supernatural church. We are the glorious church that this book, Ephesians, describes us as in Ephesians chapter 5. It says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light, 
or shine on you. I want to thank you for being with us today. It was my privilege and honor to share these truths with you. May God's blessing, may his life, his peace be on you today in a mighty way. Look forward to seeing you next time.